Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Today I'm going to be covering one of the strangest pieces of audio hardware I have ever come across. Now, finding one of these 30 years ago wouldn't have been too unusual, if you knew where to look, but now, these are uh, quite strange, since they really don't have a niche they fill anymore with digital audio being, you know, everywhere, on our phones, computers, all of that. So you don't need a box this big to create and decode it. So this is this machine's entire purpose. By the way, this is just the power supply. It takes an analog input and converts it to digital. But that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is that the digital audio is stored on a video signal that you record onto a VCR. So this thing actually has a video output, a composite video output that you plug into a VCR and then you plug the video output of the VCR back into this thing to play back audio from the video tapes. But today I wanted to plug this thing straight into a television to see what those video signals look like. Because it's just good old composite video, you know, it's, it's fully analog, even though the signal is digital. So, it doesn't care what it's plugged into. So I'm going to be plugging the audio output of my TCD5M into this Nakamichi machine. Also, I think, really quickly, there's a small problem with my unit. The VU meters only work when this mute light is turned on. Or sorry, when the mute button is pressed and the little red mute logo is, like, always lit. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there, and I'll demonstrate that a little more in a second. But let's look over to our TV. Here is the video signal from the Nakamichi machine. This is what it looks like. You've got this mess over here. Uh, okay, good. So, my camera is set to the correct refresh rate. Again, it looks a lot different in person than it does on video. It's going to look a lot better because, again, you know, this is it's just very hard to record. And I, unfortunately, don't have an analog video capture box. But watch closely these black lines as I hit record, or sorry, hit play, on my tape deck. So you can see the digital audio there was stored as little blocks on these lines. And, you know, it does correspond to the beat of the music. hit stop, uh, of course there's no audio input coming into it. But you still have this static over here moving, and on each track, and then this, this slowly creeping along. So I don't know what those are, and I would love to know what all of these parts of the signal mean. I assume this line here, that is slowly moving from bottom to top, I is, and it has these occasional small blips on it. I would assume that that is timer, and these might just be track information, like what the track contains, because the data on each is not the same. So my best guess is that that just tells it what audio frequency range is stored in the track. I could be entirely wrong here, but I would speculate that the audio signal is split up into, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six different parts and put on these tracks. Which I don't know how it does it from composite input, which is the weirdest thing. It's such an imprecise analog input. And also how it accurately decodes composite video fed back into it is also pretty incredible because composite looks really bad. So this whole thing is just fascinating. 
but let me show you what happens when I hold down the mute button. It has information to tell it that it's muted, but it blanks the video signal. So I can find basically no information about this thing online, literally none. Can't even find a service manual, and I've looked in a bunch of different places, but you know, that means I can't find out very much about this at all. Now, I did buy a VCR to plug this into to test it further, but that's not showing up until a little later, so I just want to mess around with it a little now. Oh, and by the way, the audio you're hearing is from the internal speaker of my tape deck, which is not automatically disabled when you plug in a line out, so that's why you can still hear the audio. If I turn down the volume of the left channel all the way, a lot of the bars stop moving. There's right channel volume. So it seems like the right channel has more bars than the left channel does. And of course if I turn both of them all the way down, Nothing happens. I'll fast forward in the tape a bit. I hope this synthwave music is copyright free. They don't seem to get any wider when you adjust the volume. Like, the bars don't change in size when you change the volume dials. Okay, here's another issue with this machine. So you can see the VU meters are not moving, the mute light is on, but when I hold down the mute switch, they start to move. So now they're moving, but I take it off mute, so it has to be muted or the VU meters don't show, which is strange. Also, if I press mute, the VU meters move, but the video signal does not. So I think there's some sort of issue with the switch, could be a blown cap, because this machine is about 30 years old. Now, the YouTube channel Techmoan, which I am a personal fan of, did a video on a similar system by, I think it was Technix, where it was a digital audio processor that used VHS tapes. The first time I saw what was going on on the screen here with the lines and more static on the right than was between the lines. I was like, this looks really familiar, so I went and I found that video, and the one he demonstrates has seven of these mostly black bars, and then more static. So I don't know if this is just my 4x3 display cutting off more bars, maybe there are more. Maybe there's like another here that would be right here, and uh, it's just a 16 by 9 aspect ratio video signal, so perhaps it uses the exact same PCM audio encoding, but I cannot be sure about that. I do recommend you go watch that video, but uh, his machine also was all-in-one. It had an integrated VCR and, uh, of course, a digital, a digital audio processor like one of these. But truly, this is just a fascinating piece of audio history. There were pre-recorded Betamax and, I think, VHS tapes with digital PCM audio that you would plug into one of these and play it back, but I, they were incredibly rare. I think less than a thousand of each tape were ever manufactured. I can't find any online for less than many thousands of dollars. But that is pretty much it for this video. That is all I can do with this unit for now. I'm, I would open it up, but I'm a bit scared to because I don't want to break anything. So I'll probably take it to be professionally repaired by someone who knows what they're doing with this era of audio hardware. But that's it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. See you next time.